as we kind of look back through some of the different methods we dis- um, developed for integration, we had some general guidelines. Uh, the first thing is look learn a basic list for integration formulas. So we should know at this point in time how to integrate things like um, x to a power, uh, 1 over x, which is the ln of the absolute value. Also, we should know some of our basic antiderivatives from um, trigonometric functions, as well as the derivative of e to the x being e to the x. We can find an integration formula that resembles all or part of the integrand, and sometimes by trial and error, if we have a complicated integrand, try to do a u substitution that will make the integral integrand conform to the formula. If you cannot find a u substitution that works, try altering the integrand, doing things like maybe trying to do a trig identity, uh, multiplying or dividing by the same quantity, addition and subtraction, or rewriting it in a way that maybe we see something that will be kind of kind of useful to us. Let's take a look at example seven. In example seven, we're asked to solve the differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 divided by x ln of x. In order to get the, um, to find the function, so our goal is to find the function y, whose derivative is equal to the prescribed function. So if we wanted to get rid of that derivative and return to the original function y, we would need to integrate both sides, take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x, We recall that from the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative and the indefinite integral are inverse operations. So the integral of the derivative of d with respect to x is just going to be the original function f, or I can call it y if we want. Let's say we'll just call it y, y equals. We need to find the antiderivative of 1 over x times ln of x. This one we can do with the substitution. In particular, if I let u be equal to the ln of x, we know that the derivative of the ln of x, our du, is going to be 1 over x dx. The 1 over x dx is right here. In place of all of that, I can swap that out for my du. And then that remaining ln of x term in the denominator that's what we let be equal to u. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of 1 over u du, which should be equal to the ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And then when we back substitute, this is going to be the ln of the absolute value. u itself is equal to the ln of x, so it's the ln of the absolute value of the ln of x plus C. So this would be what we refer to as the general solution to the differential equation. If we actually had some kind of initial condition uh, from some function value, like let's say maybe y at 0, then we could actually solve for c, and then that would give us what's referred to as the particular solution. Let's take a look at example 8. We want to find the antiderivative of the tangent of x. If we think back for a moment, we know how to do the derivative of the six basic trig functions. But if you pause for a moment and think, have we encountered throughout the class at this point in time any function whose derivative is equal to the tangent of x? The answer is no, we haven't. We haven't um, had a derivative rule that resulted in us getting tangent of x as a derivative of some function. However, what we can do is rewrite this by using an identity. Probably one of the most common identities as it pertains to tangent is the quotient identity. Tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine of x. And then when we write it like a fraction like this, this will work with nicely with a u substitution. Let u be equal to the cosine of x. du is going to be negative sine x dx. So essentially, we have what we need to make the substitution work with the exception of being off by a, a factor of negative 1. I need a negative sine x dx on the inside. So I can multiply on the inside by a negative, in particular negative 1. If I divide on the outside by negative 1, so this is going to be equal to the negative of the antiderivative of 
the negative sine x dx, that's going to be our du, and then u is equal to the cosine of x. So it's the negative antiderivative of 1 over u du, which we know is the negative ln absolute value of u plus c. And then from there, we can kind of go ahead and, and back substitute. This is going to be the negative, the ln, the absolute value of the cosine of x plus c. So this function is the antiderivative of the tangent of x. It's reasonable to think that some people might question whether that actually works. Um, just, you know, it kind of seems a little bit odd, but let's go ahead and check it. If we were to do the derivative of negative ln absolute cosine of x plus c, does that truly give us the tangent? Well, we have our negative sign. The derivative of the ln is going to be 1 over the thing on the inside. And then from the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Derivative of a constant is 0. A negative times a negative makes a positive, And we get sine x over cosine of x, which sure enough does equal to tangent x. So we have found the, the correct antiderivative here. It's the negative ln absolute value cosine of x plus c. Example 9 is one that we're going to kind of just gloss over. Um, I put it here. This is uh, another one, finding the antiderivative of secant. In order to find a function or a family of functions whose derivative is equal to the secant of x, we need to, to rewrite this. Um, and the way that we're going to rewrite it is by multiplying by a clever form of 1. The clever form of 1 that works is going to be multiplying this expression by secant x plus tangent x divided by secant x plus tangent x. I'm not going to get into the motivation of why this works, um, but at the end of the day, the, it's going to be justified because this will allow us to find the antiderivative of this thing. If we do this, you would get in the numerator secant squared x plus secant x tangent x. We can let u be equal to the denominator. This is a good review. If u is equal to secant x plus tangent x, we recall that the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x, and we remember the derivative of secant tangent, uh, tangent of x is secant squared of x. And it so turns out that this is exactly what we had in the numerator after we multiplied by that form of 1. So this will turn into the antiderivative of 1 over u du, which of course integrates to the ln of the absolute value, and so this is what we come up with. The antiderivative of the secant of x dx is going to be equal to the ln of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus c. Again, it's a very clever form of one that we're using here and one that we wouldn't expect you all to be able to kind of come up with um, on your own. The approach that we are going to take is that we are going to adopt this into kind of one of our, our basic rules formulas, one of those ones you just should kind of have, have memorized. So, and we'll have, um, in a moment, we'll have the antiderivatives for all six trig functions, uh, but certainly here's the one for, for secant of x. For tangent of x, cotangent of x is not too bad. You can do the same thing that we did in example eight, but in order to find the antiderivative of secant x and cosecant x, um, it takes a little bit of work and some uh, clever usage of, of rewriting it. Speaking of the integrals of the six basic trig functions, you're expected to know all of these. So um, some of them are pretty straightforward. And again, if you kind of want to cut down on the memorization, kind of memorize them in pairs. For example, um, the antiderivative of sine and cosine is kind of similar, and that one is just the other. We recall that for our derivative rule, in terms of memorizing the sine, if you took the derivative of something that started with a c, we ended up with a negative uh, function as a result of that. Here, whenever we try to integrate something that doesn't start with a c, those are the ones that will provide a, um, a negative, for, so for sine and also for um, tangent. 
So the antiderivative of sine of u du is equal to negative cosine u plus c. The antiderivative of cosine u du is equal to sine u plus c. The antiderivative of the tangent of u is equal to negative ln, the absolute value of cosine of u plus c. The antiderivative of cotangent of u du is equal to the ln of the absolute value of sine u plus c. The antiderivative of the secant of u du is the ln of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus c. And then the antiderivative of the cosecant of u is equal to the negative ln cosecant u plus cotangent u plus, um, plus c. So these are our antiderivative rules. Let's take a look at example 10. In example 10, we want to do a definite integral. We want the definite integral uh, from 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of 1 plus tangent squared x dx. In order to, to work this out, one of the things we can do is use one of our trig identities. In particular, anytime you see a trig function that's squared, you should automatically start to think about like a... Um, uh, a Pythagorean identity. This is going to be the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4. We can rewrite 1 plus tangent squared. That's equal to the secant squared of x dx. The square root and the square will cancel. Technically, they would cancel as the absolute value of the secant of x. But if you look at the bounds of integration, when we're going from 0 to pi over 4, that's in the first quadrant. The secant is in the first is positive in the first quadrant. So we can just kind of leave off uh, the absolute value. This function will be positive between 0 and pi over 4. Otherwise, you would have to include the, the absolute value when you cancel the square root and the square. From now there, we're going to use our uh, antiderivative rule. The antiderivative of the secant of x is equal to the ln of the absolute value of secant x plus the tangent of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. We want to plug in the upper limit of integration. This is going to be the ln of the absolute value of the secant of pi over 4 plus the tangent of pi over 4 minus the ln of the secant of 0 plus the tangent of 0. The secant of pi over 4, that's going to be the square root of 2. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1 minus the ln. The secant of 0 is 1. The tangent of 0 is 0. And then for this term here, the ln of 1 will be equal to 0. So as our final answer, this whole thing is going to be equal to the ln of the square root of 2 plus 1. And I can leave off the absolute value bars because square root of 2 plus 1 is greater than 0, so we really wouldn't, wouldn't need them here. If you're curious, if you wanted kind of a, an approximate value for this thing, the ln of the square root of 2 Uh, plus 1, that value is going to be approximately about 0 0.88. So about 0.88. We have one more example. Let's take a look at um, example 11, finding the average value of a function. The average value of a function on interval a to b is given by the following formula. It's 1 divided by b minus a, which is the length of the interval, times the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. For this particular function, what we're going to have is the average value on um, 0 to pi over 4 should be as follows. It's going to be 1 divided by pi over 4 minus 0 times the definite integral from 0 
to pi over 4 of the tangent of x dx. Pi over 4 minus 0 is pi over 4. 1 divided by pi over 4 is 4 over pi. And then the antiderivative of the tangent of x, if we go back, antiderivative of tangent of x should be negative ln cosine of u plus c. And this is a definite integral, so we don't need the c. So it's going to be the negative ln absolute value of cosine of x. And that's going to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, and I could drop the absolute value on this expression because 0 to pi over 4 is in quadrant 1. And we know that the cosine is positive in quadrant 1. So this is going to be 4 over pi times the negative ln cosine of pi over 4. Minus a minus would become a plus the ln of the cosine of 0, which is going to be 4 over pi times the negative. The cosine of pi over 4 is going to be radical 2 over 2. The cosine of 0 is 1, and then the ln of 1 would be, would be 0. And so we would get the following. This is going to be 4 over pi negative ln radical 2 over 2. That would be the average value of the tangent of x between 0 and pi over 4. If you're curious, it kind of looks to some of us like maybe this is going to be an, a negative answer. Um, when in fact we know that the tangent is positive in quadrant 1. So it might be a little bit unexpected. Uh, but this is equal to about 0.44. And the reason for that is that even though this factor looks negative, it, when you evaluate the ln at the square root of 2 over 2, that will also be negative, and therefore the product will be positive. But the average value of the tangent of x over the interval 0 to pi over 4 should be 0.44.